stream info. Good morning, Fashion Theory. How are you? Doing okay today? Doing okay. Okay is better than not okay. Oh, have you been getting into the studio for uh, Lyra at all, or is that not a thing you're doing right now? I'm actually going to be getting back into the studio to be teaching a uh, baby and me class starting next month. I'm excited and nervous. It's been a while since I've actually taught an in-person type class. No, I'm too worried about Delta variant with an unvaccinated kiddo. That is legit. That is absolutely legit. Yeah, the Delta variant definitely has me getting worried again. Like, things seemed okay there for a minute. Then... Now this, and I don't know. Nope. 
I was hoping more people would drop in and say hi. Instead of just sitting here. We'll get started with yoga in a few minutes. Um, I don't know if you can hear her, but little miss is fussing over having to go down for a nap. She's uh, started doing this thing where she does not like for anyone else to put her down for sleep except for me, which is a problem. Um, because sometimes I need a break or, you know, I am not here if someone's watching her here. Um, but like even, even for her dad, she's not, she's not cooperating. Yeah, at night for bedtime, our normal routine was that, um, you know, we'd, we'd do we'd feed her, give her a bath, get her changed, read a story, and then he would hold her for the actual going into the nursery and snuggling a little bit more and singing a song, and then, you know, we'd put her down, and now she screams bloody murder if I'm not the one holding her. And, you know, I've been with her all day at that point. And I'm just like, I love you, but get off me. It's, it's a struggle. And he's trying not to take it personally because, you know, it's not personal. It's just she's, her little brain pathways are growing and, just not sure what's going on. Aww. You just saw Crow Girl can't uh, jump in with us this morning. Boo! gonna get started. <sighs> Set your coffee aside if you have coffee like I do. Oh, come to a comfortable seated position. You can have one leg in front or one leg on top. Just whatever feels good there. Sitting up nice and tall, lightly drawing in on the belly. <sighs> Just to support the spine. And try to keep the weight right over the sit bone, so not leaning forward, not hunching back. But lengthening up, finding that point where you feel strong and stable. Reaching up through the crown of the head, hands can rest on the knees. Let the shoulders relax away from the ears. 
take a moment and I want you to focus your attention right on the spot just above your nose, right in the middle of your forehead. Notice if you're holding any tension. See if you can soften your face. Relaxing the muscles. Feel any tension from the week just melt away. Just comfortable breaths here, not forcing it to be a longer breath or a shorter breath or anything. Just whatever is natural for you. Now I want you to bring your attention towards the sides of your face, your cheeks, your jawbone. Notice if you're holding any tension. And try to relax. Draw your attention to your tongue. Notice if you are pressing it into your teeth or maybe into the roof of your mouth. See if you can just relax. Let it sit softly in your mouth. Taking a deep breath in now. Deep breath out. Let everything melt. Deep breath in. Deep breath out, no stress. <sighs> no tension from the week. One more time, big breath in. Big breath out. Open your eyes if they were closed. And let's take a big inhale, circle sweep the arms all the way up. And exhale, float the arms down right back by the hips. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, floating down. Let's do that again. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, float it down. Inhale, reaching up again. Take the right hand, get a hold of your left wrist, and gently draw it up and across. A little side body stretch. You can keep the eyes forward or look down towards the floor. Really opening up through the ribs, through the side of the body. And slowly come back up. And float the arms down. Inhale, reaching up, left hand will get a hold of right wrist. And gently tilt, drawing the arm up and across. Eyes can be wherever feels most comfortable on your neck. Gentle twist here, right hand behind, left hand across, looking over the right shoulder, allowing that twist to start at the base of the spine. Back to center. Left hand behind, right hand across, finding a twist, and over the left shoulder this time. And slowly back to center. Let's take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. <sighs> Should feel nice. Now deep breath in, and I want you to press the palms together, reaching up. You can even interlace the fingers, keep your index and your thumbs free, making kind of a, I don't know, finger gun situation. I want you to lift through the heart, eyes go up, gentle back bend. Notice if as you start to find your back bend, if your knees start to lift up. I don't want you to lose your balance. I want you to think about pressing your knees towards the floor and lengthening back, keeping the sit bones rooted. Just a gentle space here. Draw the thumbs into the space behind you. And exhale, come back to center. <sighs> Float the arms down. Woo, shoulders, hello. You can roll the shoulders a couple of times. That feels good. 
Let's do that again. Inhale, reaching all the way up. Palms touch. See if maybe you don't interlace the fingers this time. Can you keep your palms pressing together? Lengthening up and drawing the thumbs into the space behind you. Don't go so far back you feel like you're going to fall over. But keep everything lifting up and rocketing back. And back to center. Ooh, and float it down. Ooh, not interlacing the fingers. That's even more exciting on the shoulders. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. All right, let's take a big breath in. Hands are going to stop at shoulder distance apart. And then float the right hand down. Left arm reaches up and over. You're keeping the left sit bone planted into the floor as you open up through the side of the body, through the ribs. And this is just a slightly deeper stretch than we did before. You can walk your right hand out a little more, reaching up and across, finding whatever stretch feels good. And slowly guide yourself back up. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, float the left hand down, right sit bone stays planted, we open up through the side body, adjusting the left hand as you need to, and deeper side body stretch here. Hmm. And guide yourself back up. Now we're going to make it a more dynamic side body stretch. Take a deep breath in, reaching up. Float the right hand down. Find where you feel strong. Take a big breath in. You're going to sweep the left arm forward, bowing over the legs. Right hand sweeps across and come into your left side stretch. And sweep it back. Inhale through the center. Exhale as you get to the side. Inhale. Center. Exhale. Inhale, center, exhale, side. There should be a moment where both hands are off the floor. Core squeezes to support you through the center. Let's do that one more time, both sides. Inhale, exhale. Use the right arm to guide you back up. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now, with that movement, with the inhales and exhales matching the movement, you might have kind of a swirly sensation in your chest. That's good. We're just stirring up the energy. All right. Let's take another gentle twist. Right hand behind, left hand across. Looking over the right shoulder. Back to center, second side. Left hand behind, right hand across. And slowly bring it back to center. Ah, and you shake it out. Let's take the legs around. Come up to a tabletop position. Palms are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips, pushing the floor away nice and strong. And you can just take the hips side to side. Ooh, clunk. See how that feels. All right, coming back to center. Let's do a little cat-cow here. Inhale, lift the heart forward, lift the sit bones up. And exhale, round the spine up as high as you can towards the ceiling. Inhale. Exhale. Again, inhale. On exhale. Come back to neutral. And we're going to walk the right knee and the right hand over so it's more in the center of your mat. Extend your left leg back and bring the heel down to the floor. I'm going to slowly start to stack your hips. See if you can take your left hand up to the hip. We want the left hip right on top of the right. Now, if you have trouble balancing here, you can take your right foot and bring it back behind you some like a kickstand. 
but I challenge you to keep it in line. So we have just about a straight line, Ooh, looking down at my feet is hard, straight line from the left heel to the right knee to the right wrist. Push the floor away, make sure you're not just sitting in the shoulder, and press the top of the right foot down into the floor. If you've got the balance, if you feel strong here, take the left hand, reach it up for the ceiling, and it's like you're trying to stretch in both directions. So you're trying to reach up and touch the ceiling without picking your hand up off the floor. So strong, open stretch here. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Now, if you can, see if you can lift the left heel up off the floor so you're up on the toes a little bit. Just challenging your balance. Keep pressing the top of the right foot down into the floor. And then maybe, just maybe, we float the left foot off the floor entirely. Now, if you're shaking, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I am wobbling quite a bit. If you were shaking here, that just means you're working. If you're just falling over and you're having trouble finding it, take that right foot farther behind you to make more of a kickstand. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Float the left foot back down to the floor. And then let's float the left hand down. Come back to a neutral position. You can step the right knee wide and sit the hips back. Find a child's pose for just a second. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Come back up. Finding your tabletop position. You're going to step your left knee into the center, left hand into the center, and I'm going to turn around so that I can continue to look at, you know, the vague idea here. Take the right leg back and roll the heel down so the side of the foot's on the floor. You'll slowly start to stack the hips. Make sure your left hand is under your shoulder and not out in front. Right hand comes up to the hip. Now, one side might feel more wobbly than the other. That's okay, that's normal. We are not symmetrical beings. Pressing the top of the left foot down, finding that strong engagement. Take the left foot behind you for a kickstand if you need to. If you feel strong, you can take that right hand up. Create as much space, opening in the chest as you can. Nice and strong here. Maybe lifting the right heel off the floor. Come up onto the toes. If you need to pause here, that's perfectly okay. Woo! Wobble, wobble. If you can, we'll start to float the right foot up off the floor and try to get it in line with your hip. It's actually harder to have it down low than it is to reach it straight out from the hip here. Nice and strong. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. We'll slowly float it back down. Whew. Bringing the knee down, bringing the hand down. Sit it back, find your child's pose. <sighs> Coming back up. All right. Now, walking the knees in towards one another until they're just underneath the hips. We don't want them all the way together. We do want them spaced under the hips, hands under the shoulders. We're going to take the right leg back again and reach the left hand forward. Come up onto the fingertips if you can. You can even try lifting multiples up off the floor or you can try reaching the whole hand forward. Check in with your right arm. Make sure it's strong. You're not just hanging out, hunched into the shoulder. Everything is pushing away from the floor. And then maybe floating the right leg up. See if you can get it in line with the hip. Reaching the left arm forward in line with the shoulder. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Float it down. Whew. We're going to go straight into the second side. Stretch the left leg back. Stretch the right hand forward up on the fingertips if you can. Pushing the floor away with the left hand. Float the right arm up. Perhaps float the left leg up. Now, just like we did with the other one, press the top of your right foot into the floor so that you've got that stability, you've got that engagement, reaching out, stretching out. Deep breath in. And float it down. Let's sit the hips back. 
find your child's pose. Just one breath. <sighs> and bring yourself back up to tabletop. All right, we're gonna do something similar. So from here, stretch the right leg back, left hand forward, float up off the floor if you can, one or the other or both, wherever you're feeling today. We'll take a deep breath in, try to bring your left elbow to reach towards your right knee. And then exhale, press it back out, like you're pushing something away. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale, reach it out. Inhale, draw it in. Exhale, reach it out. And then float it back down. Going straight into the second side. Left leg goes back, right arm goes forward. Floating one or both. Inhale, pull the elbow in towards the knee. Exhale, push it out. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And float it back down. Sit the hips back. Find your child's pose. Nice deep breath in here. I'm going to turn back around so that I can see if anybody else jumps on. All right. Slowly walk your hands in and up the thighs. Sitting back on your heels, if that feels all right to you. I'm gonna take a deep breath in. And out. Beautiful. All right, now take the left hand and we're gonna set it behind you. On the floor, fingertips down. Grab a block to place under your hand if you feel like you need to. Your right hand is going to come behind you and match that. Now, if this is already a stretch for you, great. Stay right here. If you need to, you can walk the hands back a little bit more for more support. And then I want you to squeeze the glutes, pull the belly in, and see if you can press your hips up and forward. Now notice I'm not going very far. This is going to be an intense stretch on the quads. Both thighs are going, ooh, right now. And then slowly lower the hips back down. If you want, you can try walking the hands in just a little bit toward you. And lift the hips again, pressing up, lifting through the heart. Eyes can go up towards the ceiling. And slowly come back down. Ooh, deep stretch. If walking back, if leaning back is enough of a stretch, then just stay right there. You can even find what would be the motion of pressing the hips forward, but just a little bit more of a stretch. So it's like you're trying to just kind of press the hips forward without lifting up at all, if that feels all right. And do that one more time. Squeeze. And back down. Now you'll tuck the chin, push off the hands and just come forward into a child's pose. Deep breath in, and deep breath out. Walk the hands in, come back up. We're gonna lift up onto the knees. Now, if you want, you can grab those blocks again, set them next to your feet. From here, I'm just going to bring the hands to the lower back, fingers pointing down, thumbs pointing out, and I want you to see if you can get your pinky fingers to touch. I don't know if you can see that, but you're actually wanting to, yep, there we go, get your hands pretty close together. When you're supporting the lower back, as we draw the hips forward, just like we did a second ago, trying to lift up off the floor, draw the hips forward, lift up through the heart, and find a little baby camel pose. Eyes go up lengthening up, hips are staying stacked over the knees, belly draws in, take smaller breaths here, deep breath in, as deep as you can get, but it's still going to be small, and slowly release it, bring 
the hips back down, hands can come to the thighs, or you can come forward into a child's pose. Take a few breaths. Take note of the sensation, but don't, don't try to change it. Don't do anything about it. Just If you notice a little bit of a swirly sensation in the chest or in the head, if you notice that your hips feel a certain way, your back feels a certain way, as long as it's not pain. We're, we're looking for an energized feeling, but not pain. Come back up onto the knees. Now this time I want you to make sure that your feet are in line with your hips. You've got train tracks and not a pizza slice. Okay? Hands come to the lower back, just like before, drawing the elbows back. Everything is meant to support here. Belly pulls in, lifting up, lengthening up. Eyes start to go up, looking for the ceiling, maybe even towards the wall behind you. Deep breath. Slowly release out of it. And we'll sit back down. Beautiful. Noticing the sensation, taking a moment. That one always makes me feel a little bit wobbly. And then let's scoot back on the mat just a little bit if you need to. So your toes are towards the back edge and you're back in your tabletop position. Now we've just done a little bit on the spine, so we're going to do some cat here. Not necessarily cow, but cat. So I want you to lift the spine up towards the ceiling as high as you can. And then I want you to engage your hands away from your knees. So it's like you're trying to slide your hands towards the top of your mat. Mm -hmm. Slide your knees towards the back of your mat. Tuck the chin and lift the spine as high as you can. Come back to a neutral position. We're not going to drop into cow. Just find that neutral position. Let's do that again. Lift the spine up, sliding the hands and the knees away from each other. If you could slide, if you can slide on your yoga mat, then you are absolutely mighty. And release it back to neutral. Woo. Let's do that one more time. Lift the spine up, cat pose. And melt back down into it. Go ahead and sit the hips back. Child's pose, take a breath, take two. <sighs> and we will come back up into your tabletop position. So from here, let's go ahead and tuck the toes, lift the hips up and come into a downward dog position. So start high on your toes, knees bent, you're pushing the floor away, wrapping through the upper arms to really engage the shoulders. Your ribs are looking for your thighs. Once you've got that, knees are still bent. You can start to soften the heels towards the floor. If you need to, you can step them in a little bit or you can step them out. So heels are softening down. Hands are pushing the floor away. Knees are still bent here and you're lifting the sit bones as high as you can, lengthening from the fingertips all the way out through your tailbone. And if you feel like you've got the space to, you can start to straighten out the legs or you can just walk the dog. Bend one knee, bend the other knee, straightening the opposite leg as it feels good to you. Now, if your heels do not touch the floor, that is perfectly okay. Just find where your best stretch is and don't push past that. We wanna get a really good stretch but no injuries, please. And just slow, gentle walks. Let's bend both knees, come up high onto the toes, and slowly lower the knees down to the floor, untuck the toes, sit the hips back. Let's find child's pose. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. You can wiggle out the hands, roll out the wrists if that feels good. Deep breath in. And out. We'll come back up. 
finding your tabletop position. Okay, we'll tuck the toes, lift the hips, meeting me in downward dog, wherever your dog sits. Now walk the feet in towards each other. Depending on how you're feeling, on how stable you feel right now, I don't want you to just pick up the right leg or maybe reach it up as high as you can. Draw the knee into the chest, look forward towards your thumbs. You're gonna lean forward just a little bit. And then reach it back out, reach it back up wherever you are. Draw the knee into the chest, looking forward at the thumbs, bring the weight forward over the wrists and reach it back up. One last time, pull the knee into the chest, eyes forward, and then see if you can step the foot between the hands. <sighs> Lower the back knee down. Beautiful. All right, you want the knee right over the heel. So scooch that foot forward as far as you need to. Hips are drawing forward and down. <sighs> Grab your blocks if you need to. If you need to lift your chest up a little bit, but you need that balance help, you can always grab blocks, throw them under your hands. I'm a firm believer that modify is not a dirty word. It makes things that would not otherwise be accessible, accessible to you. Let's inhale, release the stretch back just a little. Exhale, bring it forward. Inhale, release the stretch back. Exhale, bring it forward. One more time, inhale, releasing the stretch back. Exhale, bring it forward, plant the left hand into the floor or on a block, slide the right hand up to your right thigh, find a twist looking over the right shoulder. If you feel balanced and all right here, you can reach the right arm up for the sky. Now, just like we did before, I want you to create that lengthening out in two separate directions. You're trying to touch the ceiling without lifting your hand from the floor. Deep breath in, deep breath out, we release the right hand back down. Now let's slowly walk the hands back, letting the right toes lift up. Hips are traveling back in space, so you want the hips to be going straight back, not down. Big stretch on the hamstring. Take a big inhale, lengthen out, lift the chest a little, and with that length, fold over the leg a little more. Now you might be flexing the right toes back towards your face. You might not. It just depends on how deep of a stretch you're looking for. Big breath in, big breath out. Now if you can, you're going to reach the left hand forward. Try to get a hold of your toes. Just this little cross stretch, this little twist should feel pretty good. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Now slowly bring the weight forward. Hands back down next to the feet. I'm going to tuck the back toes. Lift the knee up. And then see if you can step the right foot back to meet the left into your downward facing dog. Take a second, walk it out. Maybe the legs are a little bit warmer. They're feeling a little bit more open. <sighs> Bend both knees nice and deep. Come on down, child's pose. Sit the hips back. Dang it. Oh, my computer just shut off. Cool. Nice deep breath in child's pose. Hang out there. Oh, it's so good when I can get into the class, but also bad because then I forget to move the damn mouse to keep my laptop from going to sleep. Cool. All right. From your child's pose, we'll come back up to that tabletop position. Pressing the floor away, nice and strong. Tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward dog. Left leg, you're either just gonna lift it back behind you or up as high as you can. And then draw the knee into the chest, shift the weight forward, eyes look for the thumbs. Reach it back, reach it up. 
bring it forward. Tuck the knee high into the chest, as high as you can. Press it back. One more, bring it forward. Step the, hand, the foot between the hands and lower the back knee down. Now you can adjust once you're here. Ooch and scooch the left foot forward so that the knee stays stacked over the heel. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Let's inhale, bring the hips back to release the stretch. And exhale, come forward, find the stretch again. Inhale, bring it back. And exhale, bring it forward. Again, one last time, bring it back. And exhale forward into the stretch. Plant your right hand on the floor or on a block. Left hand up to the thigh, find your twist, look over the left shoulder. If you've got your balance here, you're pushing the floor away, we're gonna reach up through the left arm. Lengthening in both directions, opening up wide. And then slowly release the hand down to the floor. Let's walk the hands back, let the left toes lift up. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, folding over the leg with as straight a spine as you can. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Take the right hand across, see if you can get a hold of the left foot. Just that little cross stretch. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And then we'll slowly bring it forward. Tuck the back toes, lift up through the knee. We're gonna try to step the left foot back. Find your downward dog. You can walk it out, see how it feels. And slowly lower, child's pose. Sit the hips back, deep breath in. Deep breath out. <sighs> Walk the hands in. Come on up. <sighs> nice deep breaths. All right. I'm gonna take the legs and bring them around. I want you to bring the bottom of the feet together. Knees are open nice and wide, sitting up nice and tall. Hands can come to the ankles. Take a big inhale, lift through the heart, let the eyes go up. And as you exhale, round the spine into the space behind you. So you're even leaning back just a little bit if you can. Inhale, up, working through the entire hip socket. Exhale, and back. Tuck the chin for a deeper stretch. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, lengthen straight up. Find that strong straight spine. And exhale, reach the heart forward with a flat back. You can walk the hands forward for a little bit of support. And grab a drink of whatever you're drinking. And we're going to reach the right hand forward as far as you can and take the left arm, thread it underneath and find a little twist. You're gonna lean over to the left just a little bit. You're not gonna go very far. This is just a slightly different stretch for the lower back, for the hips. Take the left hand, bring it back through, reach it forward. 
right hand. I'm going to thread it underneath the left. Find a little tilt over towards the right. And deep breath in. And deep breath out. And then slowly, right hand comes forward. You can round over the legs, wherever that is for you. Maybe you're down low, maybe you're up high, depending on how tight your back is. Let the head hang down if that feels good. The more you're, you tuck your chin, the deeper the stretch down your back is going to be. So if it's too intense, you can always keep the eyes forward. Just don't crane the neck. You want to keep it soft. <sighs> Slowly walk the hands in. And let's bring the knees up and together. Now, from here. So, like we did earlier in the class when we walked the hands back, we're going to do that here. We're going to walk the hands back, fingers pointing towards the hips. We don't want to go back too far. Soft in the elbows, as soft as you can. And I want you to see if you can find a point where you can keep the spine long, chest lifting up, and, you know, minimal amount of pressure in the hands. So your back, your core is actually activated here. If you were to pick your hands up, you hopefully would not move. You would not drop. So finding that spot, I want you to see if you can float your right leg off the floor. You might have to lean back a little more. You might have to bend your knees, possibly even walk the hands back. And then maybe see if you can float the left leg. So this is a little supported boat pose. And let's set everything back down. Okay. So re-engage, find that strong space with the spine, with the core, everything squeezing. We float the right leg, we float the left leg. And then maybe walk the hands towards the hips a little bit. So you've still got a little bit of support here, but not quite as much. Whew. Bring the feet down. You can take the knees, rock them side to side. Now, you can stick with that variation or bring your hands forward, grab the backs of your thighs, lengthen up, lean back. We'll float the right leg, float the left leg. Make sure you're not hulking out here, pulling on your legs to stay balanced. It's just a little bit of support. You can even let go of the legs and reach the arms forward. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Hands come to the legs, bring the feet down. Let's take the feet wide into a butterfly pose again. Because that really works in the inner hip and the inner thigh. So you want to stretch it out. Beautiful. We're going to do one more. So whichever variation you're doing, hands behind, hands on the thighs, reaching forward, it's up to you. We lengthen up, lean back into it, try to float the feet. <sighs> nice deep breath. <sighs> if you're shaking, that means you're working. It's great. Deep breath. Slowly set the feet back down. Butterfly pose. Lean forward into it. Woo! Yeah. Move it around. Loosey goosey. Wiggle it out. Whatever feels good. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the legs. Reach them all the way out. Feet are about hip width distance apart. Flex the toes back towards your face. Lengthening up. I just want you to walk your hands down your legs. Now, I want you to try to keep your spine long here. If you start rounding in the lower back, that's okay. But I don't want you hunching the shoulders, hunching through the chest. Walking the hands down the legs as far as you can. Maybe you stop on the shins. Maybe you stop on the ankles. Maybe you can get your hands up over your toes. You're lengthening out and folding a little bit. Now keep your head up. You want to be looking right between your feet. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Maybe you can fold a little bit more. So if your hands hadn't made it to your feet yet, maybe you're just a little bit closer. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Softening into it. Now if you want, you can hang out wherever you are and let the chin tuck. You can keep trying to reach the chest forward through the feet. 
if that feels okay to you. If you're at your limit, then, then just hang out there. Just make friends with your limit. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. Take another breath in. On this exhale, I want you to round. Relax over the legs. See where that stretch takes you. Deep breath in. <sighs> Ooh. Walking the hands back up the legs, we're slowly going to sit up. Now, depending on where your body is tight will depend on where you felt that stretch. If you've got a really tight lower back, maybe that's where you felt most of it. If you've got tight hamstrings, maybe you felt it just in the hamstrings or in the backs of the knees. Me, because I have hypermobility, um, it's not a good thing, don't be jealous. I felt it up where my hamstrings actually connect to my pelvis, and I felt it down in my calves, because I've just started running again, so my calves are super tight. So. Working into a stretch that way helps you find your best stretch, where you need your stretch. So keeping that in mind, we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to lengthen up and walk the hands down the legs. Keep the spine long as long as you can. Try to flex the toes towards your face. Hands go down as far as you can. Maybe they come up over the tops of your toes. Maybe that's where you are today. Maybe not. I want to lengthen and try to fold a little. Now here, all of that relaxing we did in the face at the start of class, I want you to employ that here. So we're gonna soften right above the nose, right between the eyes. I'm gonna soften the jaw, relax the tongue in the mouth, lengthen and fold. One more time, lengthen, round. Maybe your chin is tucking down towards your chest, and maybe your eyes are just down to, towards the floor. It's entirely up to you. Find your best stretch. Notice if you start to hold tension anywhere weird. Sometimes one of my legs will tense up because it's tighter than the other, and I have to actively try to relax it. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And walk the hands back up. Shake it out, loosey goosey. You can roll the ankles, shake the legs, or give them a little windshield wiper back and forth. We're gonna scoop the butt forward and slowly lower yourself down to the mat, drawing the knees up into the chest. Hug the knees in tight. You can have one hand on each knee. You can interlace the fingers. You can reach up and over, trying to get a hold of opposite elbows. Try to flatten your lower back along the floor, reaching out through the sit bones. Maybe you find a gentle rock side to side if it feels good. If it doesn't feel good to move here, then just hang out. Just relax into the floor. Releasing the knees, we're going to take them wide, wider than the ribs, flex the feet, and kick your heels up towards the sky. Now I want you to keep your elbows towards the inside edges of your knees, but reach your hands up to the outside edges of your feet. If you can't get a hold of the outside edges, you can just get a hold of your big toes, or even if you need to, just grab onto your ankles. If you can, try to keep the elbows on the inside, hands come to the outside. Nice deep breath in, drawing the knees down towards the floor while still keeping the lower back down. So you're still reaching out through the sit bones, flattening the spine against the floor. If drawing your knees in makes your butt point up at the ceiling, don't go quite as far. Back out of it a little bit. Flatten the lower back down, draw the knees in. Nice big stretch here. And you can find a gentle rock side to side in our happy baby pose. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now a little tipsy butterfly, just try to bring your feet together and grab onto them here so you can press the knees away. Deep breath in, deep breath out. We'll slowly release the feet, 
Oh, bring them down to the floor. Maybe take the knees, wiggle them side to side. Feel that stretch through the hips, a little bit up into the side body, into the core. And then however you like, you can roll to your side and sit up. Or you can just try to come up with your core strength. I want you to come up and sit in a comfortable position. We're going to end a little bit early today because I have a lunch date with my daughter and her grandmothers. So we're going to, we're going to call it here. Just come to a comfortable seated position. If you can remember which leg you had in front or on top at the start of class, try to have the other one there this time. Hands can rest on the knees, drawing the shoulders away from the ears, lengthening through the crown of the head, sitting up nice and tall. Notice if it feels different than in the start of class. Did you have to force it in the start of class and now you're just like, ah, oh, I can sit up tall, I feel strong, I feel mighty here. I'm gonna take a deep breath in. As you exhale, I want you to make an ah sound. Ah, just a nice big sigh. Let's do that again. Inhale. Be as loud as you like. Ah. On this last breath in together, take an inhale. Strong circle. Sweep the arms up. Let the palms touch overhead. Exhale. Take the hands down. Thumbs come to the heart. Head is bowed. Eyes are closed. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to guide you. The light in me honors and acknowledges the light in you. Namaste. All right. Well, that was nice. Um, all right. If you were here last week and um, at the end of class I had all of my announcements, I misspoke. Next weekend is not the wedding that we are getting ready for. It is, in fact, the following weekend. However, next week we have an event that we are going to downstate. So um, there will be no Saturday yoga, but depending on how the week goes, I might do Sunday morning yoga. So have um, a keep an eye on the Facebook page for those uh, announcements so you know what's going on. Um, if you want to support me, one of the best ways to do that is to share my videos, share my Facebook page, share just what you like about yoga, what you like about yoga with me specifically. You can find all of my Twitch stream videos archived on my YouTube channel of the same name, Fit Strong Fairy Mom. Feel free to share those videos. If there's one that you really like, share it with your friends. Post it, send it directly, invite your friends to join you in doing yoga, um, either on your own time or, um, you know, when, when I have class, invite your friends to join us. Help me build this community. Fashion Theory says, thanks for a great class. You're so welcome, darling. I miss your face. Um... Yeah, really, honestly, the best way you can support me is help me build this community. I have been working towards getting more followers here on Twitch, so share the channel, invite your friends, invite your friends to follow and support me, even if they're not interested in doing yoga. Like, just tell them to come hang out for the first 10 minutes of class that is, you know, coffee and hangout time. Um, if you would like to support me in a more monetary fashion, you can find a link to my PayPal in the About Me section here on Twitch and in the Facebook event. Um, I also have a Patreon that is yoga and everything else going on in my life, so it's a lot. Um, I, I don't have a lot of things that I've posted right now because we've been going through the eight-month sleep regression with my child, and that is exhausting. So, um, it's a little all over the place, but it's still fun. It's still great. If you want to support me, you can find that link also in the About Me section here on Twitch and on the Facebook event page. Um, it is Patreon with the same handle, Fit Strong Fairy Mom, so you can look it up. 
Uh, one last thing is I also have a link to my Amazon wish list if you want to spoil me a little bit. Uh, or even there are a couple things on there. Actually, I think only one thing on there right now that would be awesome for doing yoga here on Twitch. Um, so anyways, all of those options are out there. But this is a free class. This is my gift to you and to the, to the world. So feel free to share it everywhere. I hope you guys have a great week. And I will see you potentially next Sunday.